Hi and welcome to another Essential Lightroom video tutorial. In this week's video we're going to take a look at how we can take this image and we're going to process it through until we get to this final result which looks like this. So as you can see we've got a nice desaturated kind of look, the skin tones are really nice, there's a nice warmth to it and I'm going to take you step by step through the entire process of recreating that effect right now. Okay, so I'm going to take you through each of the panels that I've used and each of the settings and show you and explain why I've used them to get this end result that we're going to work towards. Now, it's a really great kind of effect if you're dealing with the female skin tones. It really gives a nice natural look and feel to it. There's a couple of steps at the end that are purely optional that you can add to give it a more filmic look. And that's something if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll take you step by step through how we add those extra final steps to give it a little bit of something extra. Now, as always, these settings are just a starting point. Every image has its own characteristics and just use this as an understanding of how you can recreate a similar effect. Now, if you like the kind of effects that we reproduce on this channel, please check out EssentialLightroom.com. We've got a whole range of completely free Lightroom presets you can download, install and start one click editing your images very, very quickly. If you like those and you'd like to help support the channel, we've also got a whole range of great commercial presets that are available at great prices. Again, check those out in the shop. Anyway, let's crack on with taking a look at editing this image. So I'd also recommend before you start working on an image, just make sure that you have no settings applied to it. So we're dealing with the unprocessed image. If you need to do that, just hit the reset button on the bottom right hand corner of the develop module. So let's go and take a look at the basics panel to start off with. We're going to do some of the basic tweaking of this image. First thing I want to do is just generally warm the tone up a little bit. It's a little bit cool and a little bit green at the moment. So I'm just literally going to give the temperature slider just a little bit of a bump to the right hand side just to introduce a little bit of natural warmth. So it looks like the sunlight is sort of warming her face and the leaves and so on. We got a slight yellower tint to it. I'm not going to deal with the tint itself. We're going to leave that as is. But I am going to push the exposure up about a third of a stop just to give it a little bit more dynamic range in there. So it looks like we've got a stronger light coming in from the left hand side and hitting her face. Next up, we're going to tweak a few other things. We're going to drag the contrast down a little bit. We're going to flatten the image out. Not too far, somewhere around that kind of point. I want to get a nice sort of smooth transition in here. I want to flatten that out so we don't get a harsh contrast in there. Next up, we're going to just push the highlights a little bit. And I'm going to take those up Somewhere in that kind of region looks pretty good. Just making sure we're not really blowing anything out on the face. I don't mind too much in the background if that kind of blows out because the face is the focal point of this image. I'm not going to deal with it. The shadows, whites or blacks. I'm going to leave those as they are. But I am going to drop the clarity down just by a smidge just to sort of soften things out to help with smoothing the skin tones out to give it a nice smooth natural look to it. Next up, the vibrance. I'll leave that for a moment because what I want to do first of all is desaturate the overall image. I'm going to drag that down to about minus 40, somewhere around there. And you can see that now gives us a kind of a really desaturated image. But I want to sort of bump up the hair color and the reds, the warmer tones in the image. And to do that, I can simply use the vibrancy slider. I'm going to push that up not too far, probably about plus 30, somewhere in that kind of ballpark, somewhere around there. And that'll just introduce a little bit of those warmer tones back into it while keeping the cooler shades in the image desaturated. And that's it. That's all I want to do with the basics panel for this particular image. Like I said at the top of the video, each image has its own characteristics, so make sure you process this the way you like it. So next up, we're going to jump into the tone curve. And this is where we're going to do quite a lot of the sort of changes to this image. So we're going to jump into the tone curve, making sure that to start off with when the RGB channel and when the point curve mode, if you're not, just use this little icon in the right hand corner of the tone curve palette. And you can see we can just switch between the two different modes in there. Now we're just going to add a couple of extra points on the intersections and we're going to tweak the image ever so slightly. I'm not going to flatten the blacks like I do a lot of the time. I'm going to leave those as they are so the black, any black in the image will stay pretty black. But what I want to do is grab the shadows and we're going to give those just ever so slight bump up. Nothing drastic kind of around but there. Now we're going to take the mid-tones and we're going to pull those down a little bit. And that's going to give us a nice fairly flat looking image. Now I don't want to go too far with this and again totally non-destructive so if you find that you do some other adjustments and you need to come back to this point you can do that very easily. We're going to go to the highlights and we're going to give those just an ever so slight bump somewhere around there 
tiny, tiny amount. So let's take a look at before and take a look at after. So you can see it's flattening the blacks down, but it's not getting rid of the entire darkest points of the image. Now, normally I kind of leave it there, but for this particular example, I want to jump in and start adjusting some of the RGB channels to accentuate the certain shades and colors and tones in the image that I want to, to work with. Now, because a big part of this image is in the green shades, I want to adjust the greens first because that's going to have the biggest influence on the overall color in the image. So let's just switch over to the green channel. And for this, it's a very simple adjustment. We're going to pin the middle. And we're going to grab the bottom area and we're going to drag that over. Now, you'll see you think that even though it looks like there's no color information in there, it is having an effect on the image. So. I'm only going to go a small amount, somewhere around that kind of mark. So you should see now that changes the color in the back or the tone in the background. So you can see the difference. We've started to warm things up a little bit, make it slightly less green. Again, like I say, these are quite subtle adjustments, but when you add them all together, they build up to get a really nice result. Next up, we're going to jump over and we're going to the red channel because I want to now just influence the skin tones and the hair and the red berries. Again, this is a pretty subtle adjustment, and we're gonna do the same again. We're just gonna pin the three intersecting points so it makes it easy to adjust. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab the midpoint and we're just gonna pull that down ever so slightly. Not too much. Around about by there. That looks pretty good. So all our adjustments with the tone curve. So you can see we've now changed quite a lot of the characteristics. Now, the thing that you're kind of finding with this now is that the skin kind of looks just a little bit washed out. So we're going to address that next. Now, working with skin tones in Lightroom is pretty easy. And one way that works really well is if we come to the color palette and making sure that we target the orange for the skin tones, then what we're going to do is we're going to use the hue first of all. And you'll see that if I make a big adjustment on this, you can see the hair and the face all start to change, they all start to get a lot more red because we're shifting that over to the left hand side, closer to the red spectrum. Well, we don't want to go that far with it. Probably going to go somewhere about around about be there. We're going to grab the saturation and we're going to give that a little bit of a boost. And finally, we're going to grab the luminance and we're going to darken those skin tones down. So you should notice that the hair and the skin start to take on a much more natural a lot less blown out kind of effect. So there's before, there's after. So we bring back a lot of that lovely natural glow in the skin while retaining those nice highlights. So as you can see, that's just one simple adjustment and has a marked effect on the skin tones in the overall image. And the final thing we're gonna to do to wrap this up now is we're gonna jump over to the split toning. And what I wanna do with this is I just want to adjust or introduce some warmth into the shadow area. Because at the moment, again, it's still looking a little green in the background. So bringing some warmth into that will help counteract that overall greenness to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the saturation to about 10. So any adjustments that I make can be seen. And then we're going to grab the hue, uh, the hue slider and we're gonna bring that over until we get into the sort of the warmer orange yellow kind of range somewhere kind of around that point looks pretty good again you can adjust the saturation if you think you need to so you can see if we start to take that up we get a more sort of polaroid retro kind of photographic effect we can bring that back down somewhere around there looks pretty good so let's look at before and take a look at after so you can see it just generally warms the background up ties everything a little bit better together and that's pretty much the effect all wrapped up now you could leave it at this point if you wanted to easily create a preset for this if you wanted to as well but what we're going to do is we're going to take it one step further to give it a more of a filmic kind of look and that's very very easy what we're going to do is we're going to jump down to the effects panel and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a post crop vignette in there because we're going to draw attention we're going to darken those edges off draw attention to the subject and to do that, we're just simply going to grab that, drag it down to the left-hand side. That's going to darken those edges off. Somewhere around that kind of region looks pretty good. So before and after. Not hugely noticeable, but it helps you draw your, your sort of eyesight into the image itself and focus on the main person in the image. Finally, we're going to introduce some grain to give it a more filmic look. So for this, we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see the face. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring the grain up to about 40. Somewhere around that kind of range. There we go. And I kind of like the way that Lightroom deals with grain. It has a quite a natural look to it, the film grain. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the size up to about 
40 and we're going to bring the roughness to about 40. Let's adjust the amount. Let's take that to about 50. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I kind of like that. So we now have that sort of natural filmic look to it. We've got a bit of film grain in there. We've got that vignette bringing your eye into it. And that's pretty much the entire effect with an extra couple of steps. So there's the final finished result. And this is what we started off with. Already quite a nice picture, but I think the end result is much more interesting, has a lot more sort of characteristics to it, a lot more film-like. So there we go. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Don't forget to go to the website, EssentialLightroom.com. Grab yourself some of those free presets, and if you like those and you'd like to invest and support the channel, please take a look at the range of commercial presets we offer as well. Well, until next time, take care.